The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godswil Akwabio, has urged the National Assembly to quickly pass the Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB, irrespective of whatever percentage of revenue is allocated to the oil producing communities. There has been outrage, especially in the Niger Delta region, over the 3% share recommended by Nigerian lawmakers who recently passed the bill. While the House of Representatives recommended 5% as equity holding for the host communities, senators pushed for 3%. The Southern governors in their recent meeting also rejected the 3% proposed by the host or for the host communities. Uh, they said a 5% share would even be better. Well, joining us to discuss this is Thompson Okorotie. He's the Deputy National Chairman for PANDEF. And Dr. Peter Mayde is the River State Commissioner for Energy and natural resources. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you for having me. Great. I'm going to start with you. Um, um, the, I'm starting with the national chairman, um, the assistant national chairman of PANDEF. Um, so tell us exactly what you, um, what you, how you feel about the three percent, because. Um, Governors are kicking against it. A lot of people in the Niger Delta are agitating against it. Um, but then there's also the issue of 30% that will be allocated to um, for some form of um, um, drilling of oil or in search of oil in the Chad and in the northern parts of the country. But the host communities are at least getting 3%. Uh, how does that make you feel as PANDEF? PANDEF is thoroughly disappointed. And we have said so in the community that we issued a few days ago. Uh, we uh, believe that this is yet another exhibition of insensitivity on the part of the national government. And the uh, original uh, agitation is for 10%. That's what we still stand on. But unfortunately, they have lowered it to 5% in the case of the House of Reps and a ridiculous 4% in the case of the Senate. As a, a medium-term measure, we join the government to say uh, we take 5% now, but the battle is not over. We are looking for 10%. Well, I mean, this bill has already been passed, and you're saying the battle is not over. Uh, as as, as the, the, the manner of things uh, is in Nigeria, once it's passed, it's passed. Um, pushing for PIB has taken over 20 years. What's the assurance that we are going to have um, the next group of, you know, senators or National Assembly members, um, you know, shift grounds on what has already been passed into law? Uh, but that's what I'm saying. As a medium-term uh, 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 situation, we accept 5% and not 3%. i have said so. But I'm just letting you know that we had an original position of 10% and that we didn't get it uh, was a disappointment. Hmm. Let, me, let, me, let, let me go to what governor, uh, former governor of Akwaibom State, who is the now, now minister, um, he spoke about the fact that um, we should just take what is being given and just make sure that, you know, um, this bill is passed and, you know, we go ahead with the business of the day. In fact, he said, and I'd like to quote, uh, he said, we should just pass the bill irrespective of what it is now for the oil producing countries. He said that whatever we agree on now, we can accept it at least. Uh, let us start from somewhere, he says. Um, when he says we, it seems like um, he's speaking for the people of the Niger Delta because he is the minister uh, for the Niger Delta. Do you think that he's re-echoing the voices of the people in the Niger Delta? Because you seem to be on the same side with him. You're saying that, well, uh, it's, uh, although it's disappointing, but you seem to accept what the National Assembly has given. But is this what the whole of the Niger Delta uh, is advocating for? But, um, earlier I told you the position of the Niger Delta. What we wanted was 10%. This, that's why I call this. I do not know if I'm not making my myself clear as a medium-term measure. They, like you rightly said, the bill took 20 years over for us to have it passed, finally. And all this while, we've been making representation, but it fell on deaf ears. So let's have what we have now and uh, go on. 
Okay. Uh, let me let me go to Dr. Mayday. Dr. Mayday, you are a, a commissioner in your state, and I know that there's been a quick pressure for this bill to have been passed as quickly as possible, um, especially um, with the outrage in the Niger Delta right now. Um, what, where do you stand on the fact that 30% is not going to be allocated to the oil producing communities? I'm taking you back to the fact that we have had militancy as a result of the fact that um, all of the monies that are, are gotten from oil production in the Niger Delta does not reflect in the lives of the communities uh, in those oil producing areas. We also, I'd like to point you to the fact that we have the Ogoni spiel that you know the presidency campaigned upon uh, and, and promised that there was going to be a cleanup. Now, if there was some form of responsibility uh, from the government, we probably would still not be talking about the oil spill or the Ogoni cleanup. Um, how does this generally make you feel? Well, it's unfortunate that uh, it makes me feel very, very disappointing because we actually made a lot of effort to uh, see what we can do to add value to this bill, to make sense, so that this bill can actually add value to the Niger Delta. But unfortunately, all the effort we made seemed to fall on deaf ears because we made a very beautiful presentation as a state to the National Assembly. And uh, I know that both the host communities, the respective Niger Delta states, made their effort to see what we can do to get a better deal for our people. Unfortunately, the bill uh, so passed is very, very disappointing and very, very uh, 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 a great disappointment to our people. The essence is that uh, everything that has to do with federal government is traded in high level of politicking as well as high level of bureaucracy. You see, the 10% that we asked for was what was already offered us before now. You know, the previous bill that came out, we were offered 10%. And so we were not asking too much when we asked for 10%. They actually proposed 2.5%, and we asked for 10. Now, out of uh, 10 and 2.5, they gave us 3. That's an insult, not just to the oil-producing states, but to the oil-producing communities and to the whole of the Niger Delta. You know, that's the golden egg that is laying this. And that is the chicken that is laid this golden egg for this country. If there's no Niger Delta today, there will be no Nigeria because the revenue, about 80% of the revenue that is sustaining this country is coming from here. So I think that this would have been a better opportunity to right the wrongs by offering the best to the, uh, the states as well as the oil producing states. Do you see, like Dr. You Dr. Medi, I'm sorry, let me just come like, in there. You and uh, the PANDEF man have continuously said that all your calls have fallen on deaf ears. But what does this say about the members that are representing those communities on the floor of the National Assembly? These are people who are supposed to be representing your people. These are the people who understand the plight of the people in the Niger Delta and in these all producing communities, uh, especially the likes of the Ogoni communities. Um, what does this say about them? Because there are people who, pundits who have said that our members of our National Assembly uh, are there and uh, to serve themselves and not necessarily the people. Shouldn't this have been a better time for them to show that selflessness uh, in, 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 this, in the passage of this bill and the percentage that the all, whole, uh, all communities uh, were asking for? You see, when, when you talk about the people representing us, I like to ask, I like to ask, how many are they in terms of the other regions in Nigeria? How many from other regions? And how many from the Niger Delta? You see, the imbalance that characterizes the structure of the country is where the problem is coming from. Because whatever you take to the National Assembly, in as much as those from the other region are not benefiting better, then our people are so changed. That is the reality of the situation. And this is where we find ourselves. I know they may have done their very best because I know when we did the presentation, we had all their support. They gave us all the support we needed. We did the presentation as brilliant as the presentations will be. But unfortunately, what they passed did not make any representation, does not show that there was even a public hearing. Because I cannot see a situation where 10% was asked for. Out of the 10% that was asked for, only 0.5% 
was recognized from the 10%. Because whether you like it or not, what they gave to us is 0.5%. Because they offered 25 before, and then we asked for 10. So I think the federal government is not sensitive with our plight. They are not sensitive with the situation in the Niger Delta. They are not sensitive with our state. So we are very, very worried, and we are not happy about this. And I don't know what can remedy this. Because in the situation and the circumstances where we find ourselves, it means that the Nigerian state does not recognize the Niger Delta. Neither do they recognize the state where we are. You talked about your cleaning up your other time. Let me tell you, I was part of that program. And if you look at the high level of bureaucracy and red tapism that is characterized by that program, that is why it is not making any progress. In fact, the last appointment that was done was characterized by high uh, politicization. Those who are in the Senate, those who are in the ministry, decided those who will represent the Ogoni communities, no longer the Ogoni people. So you can see that kind of situation. What do you expect? You expect people that government is giving, because when they appoint you, you are bound now to be responsible to them. So that is the reality of it. Okay. Our people did their very best. But unfortunately, how many are they in the National Assembly to be able to stand against the higher number okay. of the other people from the other regions for okay. which they feel that this uh, bill does not consign them? Let me, let me, one let thing me that is very clear is yeah. that the peace of the Niger Delta is important for whatever revenue that any of them takes in this country. Okay. Uh, you just, you almost, you know, took my next question. But back to Mr. Uh, Okorote. Um, now, an elder statement from the Niger Delta Extraction, uh, Chief Edwin Clark, has called this particular bill satanic and unjust, saying that all companies may be stopped from their production activities um, uh, if the percentage allocated to the all uh, communities isn't reviewed upward. Um, how, do, how will this happen? Because this sounds like a threat and it also sounds like a, more like a warning. Um, if PANDEF is s supporting this um, statement by the elder statement, what does this mean for the oil production communities and, of course, the IOCs in these parts? Well, it, it, it means that... Um, uh, Oh dear, I think that um, we're having connection issues with um, Dr. Uh, Okorotie. So quickly, um, wrapping up things, um, Dr. Mede, would you want to quickly, just in a few sentences, wrap this up for us? Yes, I think I have uh, more things to say on this. We, see, we don't have time, so quickly. There's another <laughs> aspect of this bill that is also very annoying. A situation where you are talking about Beside the, the three percent issues, a situation where you are asking, you are now saying that you will take thirty percent of this fund or the profit to take to look for oil in other parts of the country. That's another very annoying part of this bill. Well, like we are saying, when you talk of three percent, three percent of what is it? Three percent of profit, and if it is three percent of profit, then that is a greater slap to us than anything anybody can talk about because what we think is appropriate. Is it 3% of equity representation or equity participation or just 3% of profit? Well, if it is 3% of profit, then it means that we are totally enslaved to the IOC because they determine the cost of production. They also determine the revenue. And so, and they also determine the profit because revenue minus cost is equal to profit. So in a situation where they determine all this, then it means we are at their back and come to see that whatever they give to us will even be what will be the three percent. Uh, well, this is a conversation that we must have again and again until um, you know we make something of it. But I want to say thank you very much. Uh, Thompson Okorotie is the Deputy National Chairman Pandef, and Peter, Dr. Peter Mede is the River State Commissioner for Energy and Natural Resources. Thank you very much for being part of the conversation. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, I will give you my take. Well, here's my take. It's pretty short. I do not know if we're really ready to take Nigeria from where it is to where we want it to be. We keep talking about these issues every day. It seems like we even are tired of having these conversations because they have become mere talk and no action to back it up. So I'm asking you who's watching me, you the average Nigerian, are you really ready 
to change the course of Nigeria today, to take it to a better place? Do we really want change in this country? And I'm not just asking you, the average Nigerian. I want you to ask your leaders, the person, your, I mean, I'm talking about your local government chairman, the councillor in your ward. I'm talking about every person that you point to as a leader who seems to be leading you or representing you. Are we really ready? Is there a concerted effort for us to move this country to where we want it to be? Because if we are ready, we will stop having conversations and start acting. But until then, this is it, where we're going to continuously be going around in circles and hoping for the best. You can't keep doing the same thing the same way, hoping for a different response. We need to change tactics and we need to start that, doing that right away. I'm Mariana Kun, thanking you all for being part of the conversation. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.